All right, guys, welcome back to our intro to Adobe Illustrator. And in our last video, we were talking about how to draw basic shapes using the shape tool here, or what's known as the rectangle tool, where all of your shape tools are stashed away. And so I just want to draw some basic shapes here and talk to you a little bit about it. So I'm just going to draw a square, and then I'm going to draw a uh, like a circle, and then maybe I'll draw a star after that. Okay. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at these things right now. So now I drew these in a very certain order, right? I drew this, uh, this rectangle was first, and then I drew the circle, and then I drew the star. And you can see what Illustrator has done. It's layered them together in a very specific way, in the order that they were created. So the square came first, and it's sitting at the bottom, and then we have the circle that's in the middle, and then we have this, this star that's sitting on top of everything else. Okay, so <clears throat> that's just a little point that you should get about the program. As you draw, Illustrator will layer things um, on top of uh, themselves in order of how you draw them, okay? And you can adjust that, that layering at any point. There's two different ways to adjust the layering, okay? One is just do a right click on anything that you've drawn. So if I select this and then do a right click, there's this arrange uh, function here and you can see these are super self-explanatory. There's bring to front, bring forward, bring backward, and send to back. So bring to front and send to back are the most extreme movements that you can make and they, they tend to work the best. This bring forward and bring backward, sometimes those work and sometimes they don't. So I tend to just only activate this function when I really need it. So, for instance, the star here is already in the front because it's the last thing that I drew. But let's pretend I wanted to send it to the back. Well, you just go to send to back, and it will then layer it all the way to the back. So now I have this in the back, then I have this in the middle, and then I have this in the top. Okay? So I can do that with the circle as well and just do a quick little right click, and I can go send to back, and it'll send the circle all the way to the back. Okay? Now why you would want to do this, it varies for whatever kind of project you're working on, but it's just something to recognize um, that it is possible to move these things around. If, if Illustrator goes ahead and layers something together the way you don't like it, you can always move them forward and backward at will. There is also the manual way of doing this, where if I select this square here, I can go to Object, and then the manual way of getting to the Arrange function is up here, where you can go, excuse me, you can go, uh, say, Send to Back, right up there at the top. So as usual, as I've been saying all along, every single function that you can find over here in your panels bar, over here in your toolbar, um, here in your right click menu that pops up can also be found up here in the what I like to call as under the hood of Illustrator. So, so there we go. Okay, so we're done talking about that. Let's move on to the next thing. And that is that these items that we've drawn have a very particular stroke and a very particular fill. You can tell that they have a fill of white because when you layer them over each, over themselves, they block out the rest of the shape that's there. So like this little section of the circle that's here, you can't see it because this star has a white fill and it has a black stroke. Now, alternatively, same way, this circle, white fill, black stroke. Okay, and the way to adjust those things, it's over here, it's these two uh, fill, and stroke panels that are here in your toolbar. And so you can change the fill and the stroke to anything that you like. Now, mainly the reason why you would change the color of a fill is because you're going to be doing a color illustration of some sort. And that's not what we're going to be doing with this program. We're really just trying to lay down nice clean line work that can then drive our laser cutters, okay? So we don't really care what the fill is on this because there will be no fill on the laser cutter. We're just trying to create guidelines for the laser cutters, lasers to zoom around. So um, mainly I like to just remove the fill on all the line work that I lay down when I know I'm going to be using Illustrator for a laser cut. And so the way to do that is just make sure that you have fill selected by just clicking on this actual icon. If you double click on it, it'll bring up this color picker and you can change the color of whatever you want for the fill. But 
<clears throat> for now, we want to remove the fill altogether. We don't want it to be white. We don't want it to be purple. We want to just take it out. And the button to remove the fill is right here. It's called the None button. It looks like a big red slash. So when you click that, it'll remove the fill from whatever you have selected. And then, as you can see, we can see the rest of that circle peeking through because the fill has now been removed. Similarly, we can do that with the circle. Right now, it's got a white fill. We can double check that by looking over here at the fill and stroke panels that are here. And you can see that Illustrator will update these panels based on what you have selected. So like when I select the star, it shows me that I don't have a fill and I have a stroke. But when I select the circle or the square, it switches to show me the fill and stroke of that individual item. So I can change this circle to have no fill. And then I can change the square to have no fill, but it won't be too evident because it's white on white. <laughs> anyway. Uh, just that's a little thing and uh, it can get a little bit confusing as you start to draw multiple multiple shapes on top of themselves um, So be aware that everything that you draw may have a fill and a stroke already assigned to it at The time that you draw it and you may need to adjust it to whatever makes you feel best and the way to do that is right over here So there you go and thanks a lot for watching in our next video um, we are going to move on to talk about outline mode, which is um, a very key element of using Adobe Illustrator to drive the laser cutters in our prototyping lab. So stay tuned for the next one. Thanks a lot.